welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host. Uh, joining me tonight, I know you guys expect me to say David, but guess what? It's not David. It's Carolyn. Hello, Carolyn. Hi, Pam. How How's everybody doing? <laughs> doing well, doing well. I mean, it's so different for you and I to be doing this show together, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's going to be but fun. it'll be fun. Got some, yeah. yeah, great guests. Yeah, great guests here. And it's pretty late where you are, so I'm not we're not keeping you up, are we? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be up because there's a mini hurricane going through, so <laughs> Oh no. That's yeah, the perks yeah. of living the perks of living in Florida. Yeah, perks right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not even. <laughs> Well, Chicago's been a balmy 95 today, so we're supposed to get rain tomorrow. We'll see how it goes from there. You'll be getting uh, my rain. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you. (laughs) But today's double fun day. We have two guests joining us, and we couldn't be more excited. We have actor, producer, and writer Lauren St. Victor with the man with the long name. And award-winning actress, producer, and singer, Carla Mosley. Most of you will recognize them from The Bold and the Beautiful and also Guiding Light, but they have done so much more, and we are going to talk about that and more. So welcome, Lawrence, and welcome, Carla. We're so happy to have you with us tonight. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. So happy to be here. Ooh, Carla's echoing. I like that. I know, I don't. Did, did you hear that? It happens sometimes. Very strange. <laughs> so did you both work today? I did not work today. I think, Carla, did, were you in today? Yes, I worked today. It was fun, and then I uh, have a longer day. It was a quick day today and a longer day tomorrow. Well, it's always good to work, right? I mean, that's what you want to do. Oh, yeah. Yes. Whether it's short or long. <laughs> right. And it's always nice for us to, uh, you know, it's nice for us to get to work together on bold, and then it's also great for us to work separately on our own project. So that's really fun. Yeah. Too. And you guys work so well together, I can't even begin. But I'm going to let Carolyn start out with, her questions um, regarding Bold and the Beautiful and Guiding Light, if you don't mind, and then we'll move on. You know, I'll ask a couple questions, and then we'll move on to Wedlock. Cool. Great. Hi, Carla. Um, I'm going to uh, ask you a question about the Bold and the Beautiful. Okay. Okay. One of the best additions um, uh was the addition of Maya's family. Uh, What have uh, um, Abba and Anna Maria brought to your performances, and what have you learned from them? I continue to learn every day, both on and off screen. Um, You know, they're such veterans, and I grew up watching both of them, both on stage and on television. Um, You know, so... It was one, it just felt like an honor. You know, it's already an honor to work on a show that's been on for so long, but then to get to work with people who you admire is is such a gift. And, um, you know, I love their work ethic. I love how much they value and put into every scene that we do. You know, we'll often sit around and talk about um, whether what we're saying is true to the characters is true to the family is true culturally. And, um, and I think that's what makes the family so cohesive is because we're so dedicated to making sure that our, our performances are delivered in a, in a way that's true to life and relatable and true to the characters. And they are so committed to that. And it inspires me to continue to be committed in that way. Um, and then just as human beings, you know, Anna, is, I always say Anna's like who I want to be when I grow up. She just, she is such a huge heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's always giving, you know, and both of them just have so much wisdom to offer and they offer it generously. Um, you know, they really kind of hold their position as elders in a way, you know, in, in, and I, I, I really appreciate that and I hope that I can, um, you know, when I am, 
an elder um, gives back. Oh, well, that's a, that's wonderful, and obviously they do inspire you. So that's that's a plus, for sure. Uh, and I love how that. The op- yeah. <laughs> well, it, it definitely comes across as well, for for sure. Yeah. How did the opportunity of singing at the Dodger Stadium come about, and and what ways has that experience changed you? Oh, that was really fun. Um, you know, Rain, who plays Nicole, my sister on the show, had done it, gosh, maybe a month or a month and a half before. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, I'd like to do that. <laughs> and then out of the blue, this call came um, from Eva, who, who does our publicity, saying, hey, they want to have another bold person back to sing. Would you be willing? And so I was like, yeah, of course. Um, if, you know, I've sung the national anthem since I was a kid, you know, I would sing at football games at, in high school and, um, I, I sang at the Yankees preseason and, um, when I was in St. Louis, I sang for the Cardinals, but, you know, it was as someone who's kind of an, a newly crowned Angelino, it felt like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm official now. I'm sung at a I'm Dodgers game. Right. And it also felt like it wasn't, um, <laughs> It wasn't cheating on on New York. I'm being a New Yorker too much because they originated in Brooklyn. So I was like, you know, I think this is like kind of a perfect bridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was your key to the city. <laughs> right, exactly. Carolyn. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I thought oh, I lost you. I couldn't hear no, anything no, I, for a second. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Um, and do you want me to uh, go on uh, and speak to Lauren? Yeah, go ahead with your other. Go ahead with your other question for Lawrence and Carla. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Lawrence, the final episode of The Guiding Light still remains on YouTube. Mm. Christina and Remy's yeah storyline was going along quite well. What would you have liked to add to that storyline? Like if we were, uh, if Guiding Light was still Still. going, like where would that be right now? Uh, I think, I think I would like to explore more of their hijinks. I think Remy, Christina, we kind of added humor into Guiding Light and that was, it, it came out naturally and organic and, I think we would still do that and we would kind of go through their marriage and their ups and downs and stuff like that. I think um, it would be interesting watching these two different forky individuals get more and more cohesive. But I think it would be like a lot of fun to watch. Oh, <laughs> more uh, humor and lots of fun. Well, that um, interesting, interesting. Well, I think there's a lot of Guiding Light fans out there that would like to have seen that story continue as well as all the rest of them. And it's such a shame that so many of the soaps have been canceled. And that's yeah. why it's so important that people keep watching, whether they don't like a storyline or a character or whatever. You know, you have to love the soap as a whole. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, when you're dealing with shows, Guiding Light, including radio, it's been off for 72 years, both in the beautiful. 30 years, it's like, it's the long haul. It's not for this week. It's not for this month. It's not for this storyline. It's the whole long haul, you know, and you have to be willing to allow that long journey to play out, you know. Exactly. I mean, I watch all four soaps now, and years and years earlier I didn't. I was an uh, ABC girl, but... You know, as they started dying off, I started watching more and more of them and even some of the ones that have been canceled Um, because when your stories are canceled, I mean, you lose a part of yourself. And what Mm. the higher-ups don't realize is how that really affects us as fans of the shows, too, you know, that have been dedicated for so many years and have watched them with our parents or our grandparents or aunts or friends, whatever, you know, and you guys become part of our family. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's true. Just, yeah, it's just the, the bond. You know, the bond 
with uh, you know our guiding light folks, it, it's still there. You know, um, when we do our Facebook live events, you know, so many of our the p you know the, the people that watch Guiding Light who love the show, they're right there. So it's like even though the show is gone, it, mm-hmm. it, it speaks so much for the bond between like the fans and and, and, and I'm a fan of Guiding Light. You know, so mm-hmm. it's, it's amazing right. how how that bond is still there. Yeah, we follow you wherever you go. (laughs) (laughs) Now, one question I have about your... Oh, you're welcome, please. I mean, you give us so much joy. It's just... It's something to look forward to in our lives, in our daily lives, and um, with the world the way it is now, especially more so. So um, Um. we'll keep watching. But uh, one question I have about your roles on The Bold and the Beautiful is how did you feel when they didn't continue your romance storyline together? Were you disappointed or did you just, you know, go with it? Uh, I think I kind of went with it. I mean, as much as I I enjoy working with Carla and I think we have, like, really great chemistry, you know, we had to, to allow... Carter and Maya to be different and figure out what their story is. And I'll, you know, it's always cool to play a breakup. It's always cool to play that kind of conflict. And that's a conflict that we never got to play on Guiding Light. So it was pretty, mm-hmm. it was kind of fun to have that scene where I told her to get the step in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Carla, how did you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I think it's, you know, it's, and like I said, especially because Lawrence and I work together in so many capacities, um, it's mm-hmm. fun to take the ride. I, I think one of the fun things about being on a soap is that you take the ride as an actor the same way that the audience does. <laughs> and so yeah. often mm-hmm. you'll open up the script and go, oh, my gosh, no, or is this really happening, or, you know, and, and your jaw drops, and and, it, and sometimes it might, like, kind of hurt you a little bit, but then you know right. oh, that's going to be a good story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't fond yeah. when I found out that she tried to get with Rick in the steam room when I read that. I was right. like, right. no. <laughs> Then I just hope that they, right when I find out that, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, strong about it, you know, I was like, guys, he can't take her back. Please don't make him take her back. Not after that. And when they did right. it, I was like, okay, cool, 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 yeah. cool, cool. But we're like, like Carla said, we're fans too. So we're reading the script just like you guys watch it. So we don't know what's going to mm-hmm. happen. <laughs> You know. Yeah, and you know it was kind of hard because we liked you guys together, but then again we saw how Maya, you know, was meshing with Rick, and it's like, oh, uh, you know, that kind of works too. So yeah. <laughs> that was a hard one to call. So it's a good thing the mm-hmm. writers make the decision. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's also fun for us to figure every out. once in a while. Right. I'm sorry. It's, it's fun for us. It's fun for us to um, try and figure out how to make it all work. You know, especially if it's a really mm-hmm. fast turn, to make it real and make it grounded. And you know, that it's a fun challenge. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, do you guys call each other up and say, "Hey, what can you believe they're doing this to us?" Or, "Yay, they're doing this," or something? Do you share that with each other? Or do you just go into work the next day and just work? No, we share uh, it. We share. No, we yeah. always. <laughs> we all, I mean, we always, and and not just our own stories. Like if I'm going, if yep. I'm in a storyline, I hit up Carla. Like, okay, I don't. What is this? I don't understand. <laughs> I get this perspective. Sometimes <laughs> when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to see the forest and the trees, and vice versa. Right. Okay, we. We're always talking stories. Always. Mm-hmm. That's good to know. I, I actually like that. I don't know why, but I actually do. I just I guess I would like to be a fly on the wall when you guys are talking. 
it's, it's probably and not maybe that some of the writers would be guys, too. <laughs> I don't think it's that different than how you guys may talk about an episode you just watched. I don't, it's probably, probably not that yeah. different at all. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine, especially like you said, because you've been fans, so um, that makes it different for you guys. And I have a question, Carla, about your singing. Um, you studied in France at the Roy Hart Vocal Institute. Now, were you initially starting out wanting to be a singer instead of an actress, or was it both? Both. You know, they've always gone hand in hand for me. And, you know, as you, you mentioned, the Dodgers game, um, we also did a, a Bold and the Beautiful did an episode at the Union Rescue Mission, which is a local mm -hmm. shelter, homeless shelter in L.A., and I sang in that episode. And when Rick and Maya first met, I was able to sing actually a song that I wrote in that episode. So, you know, somehow music and um, and acting have, have always sort of been combined. And, and I grew up singing, um, going to church and singing, and then also my family was just really musical. We used to make up songs around the house and in the car to pass the time. Um, mm -hmm. So that was always something that I loved and, uh, and I, and I still do. I keep threatening to do a night of um, standards or, you know, that, so that'll happen probably in the next couple of months. Yeah. Well, people would rather hear you sing than me because I think as children, we all sit there with the, you know, hairbrush microphone and sing our hearts <laughs> out, but not all of us <laughs> can continue on in public. So <laughs> you have a beautiful voice and, and I love to hear you sing. Thank you. That really means a lot. You're welcome. Lawrence, do you sing at all? No. <laughs> right. so, you're, the, you're the shower type singer. I'm the shower. You know, I think I think I can hold a tune, but I don't put in the work that I would need to put in to to make anyone want to hear me sing. So mm. I'll just say no. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe Carly nice can teach you. <laughs> oh, so you heard him. <laughs> yes, every once in a while he'll, he'll come out And he does have a very nice Because he has a nice quality to his speaking voice And actually that's what I love about right. the Roy Hart work Is that the belief is that everyone has a voice And it's just a matter of you Sort of leaning into it Putting enough energy into it So mm. I think if, Yeah, I, I, like, I, li I like your answer, Lauren <laughs> Okay <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to have to have you guys work on that together and have it come up on either, you know, B&B &B or maybe an episode of Wedlock or something in there. Right. I think I'd love to hear Lawrence come through because he does have such a, a great speaking voice. And I can just picture you singing like, you know, um, a Barry White song or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But that's all I got, though. That's all I got. Oh, yeah. That's all you got. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Lawrence, I was reading on your IMDb uh, about a TV series you were in called Stepford Side Chicks. Now, did I miss seeing that, or hasn't it been released yet? Well, I, that was actually uh, a web series, a streaming series that a friend of mine, a oh. uh, producer, put together. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a really cool show. Um, and those of you, you know, it's, it's very, it's very soapy. It has a whole lot of soap in it, a lot of drama mm -hmm. dealing with relationships. But um, it was really cool. A friend of mine is producing it independently, much like we're doing with La, and she asked me to be a part of it. And I said, absolutely. You know, I feel like there's so much good content out there and amazing writers, and I just love being a part of new work. Exactly. It gives that, you know, with the web series and the streaming like Amazon and Hulu and things like that, it gives a lot of the indie writers and um, actors a chance to do more than what they could do before. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And it just it just diversifies the market. You know, you're hearing stories and voices that you may not hear on, you know, regular network television. Mm -hmm. Right. So where can we see this? Oh, uh, you can uh, 
Uh, I believe the episodes are on YouTube. If you type in Stepford Shy okay. Side Chicks, uh, they'll pop right up. All right, I'm going to have to check that out because it sounded good when I was reading about it. <laughs> now, as we all know, you both have worked together a few times now with the soaps, uh, Wedlocked in Room 8. And last time, Lawrence, you were on our show, we talked about Wedlocked, how much we loved it and wanted more episodes. And you now have a campaign to raise the funds to make more episodes. And we couldn't even be more thrilled than we are right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're we're thrilled too, and we we feel all the love. We feel all the love from everyone, from you guys. We see you on Twitter and social media. Thank you so much, and you bringing it back. Yeah, and honestly, oh, gosh, it's because of people like you saying it to us over the years that we thought, well, maybe we should do it again. And people keep <laughs> talking about it. So, uh, and so really, you know, it, it, your your enthusiasm and love of wedlock is a large reason that it's happening. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners, for those of them I'm not familiar with wedlock, what it's about and your characters and so forth. Oh, uh, <laughs> wedlock. Well, we got to give them a whole lowdown, Carla. We got to go, go back to the <laughs> beginning. But uh, so, like, Carla and I, we, we, we really enjoyed working with each other a lot on Guiding Light. We had so much fun. I mean, a lot of Remy and Christina, they they wrote for us amazing story, and they allowed us to improv and play and kind of create stuff on our own, too, that added to Remy and Christina. So when Godding Light was ending, we were like, we still want to create this. And the idea of the relationship and marriage is very interesting to us. So Carla's mom goes, you guys should just do your own series. We're like, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think <laughs> I mentioned then... it in March. I was like, my mom said this crazy thing, and he was like, uh, it's kind of a good idea. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you but to Carla's mom. Yeah, oh, seriously. <laughs> um, but, but back then, doing a web series, like, it, no one, you know, no one was really doing them like that. I remember I was talking to Crystal Chappelle while we were at Godding mm-hmm. Light, and she was prepping Venice, just like, Tell me every like what? Do you, how are you doing this? And what for is her, this she thing? Was, what is this? And she was creating her own like platform and figuring it out herself. So now we're like, now's the time to bring it back. There's so much more we want to talk about when it comes to marriage, and we really want to get into like the the nitty gritty of it and expose ourselves a bit. <laughs> I mean, we won't tell mm-hmm. you what story who's, but. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we want to be, <laughs> you know, um, Carla, am I missing anything? No, I think I think that's it. We're really excited to explore the ups and downs and ups again of marriage. And I think what I love about Lawrence and I is that, you know, I think both of us have a similar outlook on life um, as far as just a, a kind of easiness and optimism that is natural to both of us. And I think that that really comes across in the show. Um, I think that a lot of programming today obviously is edgier and, you know, and we do go there with, you know, we are talking about kind of the thing, the unspoken things about marriage, but we do it in a way that is um, with a light touch and with a respect Mm -hmm. for each other and a respect for marriage. And uh, I, I, I love that sweetness about the show. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, Go ahead, Carolyn. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, was your mother prepared for um, the episodes or some of the episodes? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I just showed her the teaser, and the teaser <laughs> deals with... Um, <laughs> it deals That's with what I was just going to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. But I, she watched it like five times, and she was like, she was laughing out loud, and she was like, I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> Because she can't watch some of my soap episodes, you know, when it gets too risque. So I was like, okay, if this is mom approved, then uh, I think we're doing something right. Then you're good to to go. I'll I'll tell you, watching that teaser, I about fell on the floor laughing with the uh, (laughs) pubic hair politics 
And yes, people, you heard me right. I said pubic, yes. not public. Oh my God. <laughs> I was you're get, dying. You're giving a teaser, Pam. Yeah, you're giving a teaser. I now. can't help it. They well, no, the teaser's on there. They can watch it. Go to seedandspark.com and watch it. Uh, yeah. I'm telling you, that was the crazy hysterical. Thing about- the crazy thing about it was after we shot it and I would show some friends or some friends would see in the campaign and I would have these dudes go, yo, I've been there, bro. That happened to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I would hear that a lot. And I, and I was like, we're, 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 we're right back where we need to be and we're on to something because that's the thing. Like people go through this stuff all the time, but we just don't talk about it so you feel like you're alone. But mm-hmm. right. whether – Almost every dude out there have just tried it, have given it a shot, <laughs> successfully or unsuccessfully. They've given it a shot. Press one if and, you've tried that, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but if you try, keep it real. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's was, what's so great those, about it. It is, yeah, it's real. And the the what I saw that that's that's real life. So it's it's a hit for sure. Yeah, Thank you. That, that that's what we're going for is is not not the big you know is big things that happen in marriages that could be very difficult and we may tackle those things but for us it's those little tiny things that you almost feel like is exclusive to your relationship but the more people talk you find out we argue about the same thing it's always those little mm-hmm. things because it's never about the little thing the little thing usually relates to something bigger. We want to explore, like, right. the minutia. And, you know, when I first got married, me and my wife used to have arguments about where to put the bread. That was a real <laughs> thing. <laughs> the fridge? Where does the bread go in a bread, you know, a bread box? And for me, I'm like, we're going to buy a whole new box for bread? That don't make no sense. <laughs> and she was like, why do you want cold bread? And it wasn't about the bread. It was about... This is the way I grew up, and this is the way I feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. This is the way my mother did things. You know, that's what's about. So, the more we can play with these little topics, we can like unravel like the root that things are born yeah. from. You know, and also the way that we argue about things. You know, it's like if you. You know, certainly there might be times when you're in the kitchen together arguing about the bread, but then there are the times when, like, you have the bread in your hand and you know you got it out of the refrigerator, but you put it back in the cupboard because that's where you think it's going to be. Uh-huh. You come in and you're like, where's the bread, you know? And that's, that's where the funny stuff is. <laughs> right? That's real. That's real. Well, Carla, I couldn't get over your face because you never did answer him about what he did. I know. <laughs> I just let him assume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, your expressions, you know, they say it all. And, I mean, that's great acting. There's a lot of people out there that can say the words. But when you use your expressions like that, I mean, come on. That's great acting, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, our all of the episodes written and ready to go, or are you still working on those? Uh, we Our episodes are written. Um, we sat mm-hmm. down and we just kind of like improv and, and played with scenarios. Our episodes are written, and um, we plan to write more. But as far as like this go, we, we have our episodes. Mm-hmm. And how many will there yeah. be, do you know, off- well, um, right now we're looking at five, but we might add a couple more depending on, you know, um, what's wonderful is that we are reaching our goal, our funding goal. And, you know, we have one day to go. It, it technically ends, the campaign ends on Lawrence's birthday, but it's 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah. on Wednesday. So we're hoping for 100% funding, if not more, as a birthday gift to Lawrence. And, um, you know, and then from there, we can really explore if we want to, how we're going to how we're gonna use it. But we have five that are ready to go, so we know that you will get at least five and, uh, and maybe a few more. Okay. Well, we definitely want more than five. So I'm yelling at these, anybody listening, please go to seedandspark.com and donate whatever you can to Wedlock, the series. They're at 91% the last time I looked, right? 
that where you're at? Wow, yeah. Two what now. you raised? So I think that's we're at phenomenal. Now, so yeah, ninety-two. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Let's we're keep it going. Up slowly, slowly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's that, that's one of the um, coolest things about crowdfunding is like every time somebody either clicks follow or gives anything, it's like it gives us that extra like confidence. Like we can make this. There are there are people who. Mm-hmm. Are believing in this thing, even when sometimes I'm like, Carla, is this gonna work? <laughs> like, exactly. and then so, and then somebody gives or clicks follow or shares or retweets, and I'm like, this, this can work. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's we feel the love. Oh, definitely, definitely, and and I know that it gives you the confidence to go on. And there was another thing, too, that I wanted to mention that probably gave you guys a lot of confidence to do what you do, is that I read that Brad Bell loved your original Wedlock series so much that he hired you and Carla to create CBS's first sitcom, Room 8. I mean... Mm-hmm. How amazing of a compliment was that for you and a you know, a booster for you guys to continue going on doing what you're doing? I really pinch myself sometimes when I think about that story. <laughs> I mean, I, I I still can't believe that that's what happened. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, it is. It's it's such a it is such a, a confidence booster, and, um, and it was just such a beautiful opportunity, both to obviously be on Bold and the Beautiful, um, and then also to work with a network like CBS, uh, writing, submitting scripts to them, um, you know, kind of negotiating. They'd come back with notes, and we'd say, no, no, we have to keep this, and then they'd say, okay, well, yeah. you know, all right, let's find a common ground. <laughs> it was a really interesting process, and, um, and one that I think gave me definitely a lot of confidence as a producer and a writer and then um and then to have a budget to shoot you know to shoot shoot on on real sets and with all of the cameras at our disposal it was it was such it was a real gift yeah i mean yeah part of like charlotte said a part of me feels like it's hard to believe that actually happened (laughs) so like how did that all come together but it was a confidence booster you know brad bell like his lineage, he comes from storytellers, his father, like years of storytelling powers telling us that, you know, they love our story and they want to kind of invest in it in a way. It definitely gave me the confidence right. to get back in the Whitlock saddle afterwards. Um, got me really right. excited about it. And, yeah, it's like we managed to take a guy that's known for drama and, like, we made him laugh. <laughs> really cool. Which is really, really cool. Well, I think that should be the next step is Brad Bell puts his two cents into CBS and says, Hey guys, you gotta hey. watch Wedlocked. It's gotta be a series, <laughs> you know, debuting next fall or something like that because this could easily be one of the sitcoms for CBS. Uh, you know, you got us to uh, create the next set of episodes for the web version, so I think your word is pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will take that to the bank. I love that yeah. idea. You do that. <laughs> you do that. And you can let them listen to this episode right now to this interview okay. and tell them that I speak for a lot of people and then also the people that have donated to you that, you know, hello, that's what they want to see. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Now, can you let our listeners know what some of the perks are for those that donate? Absolutely. Um, let me get my trusty uh, phone. Oh, Just, I, want to make I, sure. can <laughs> I can do some of them. Oh, so, um, yeah, so we have... <laughs> So pretty much everyone who donates will get, um, you know, if you donate $15, we'll shout you out on social media, you know, whatever, in, and just give you some love that way, love up on you. Um, and then if you donate a little bit more, we'll make a video for you. Um, there's also the possibility of us answering a relationship question for you. Oh. <laughs> it's been really fun for us. 
Um, and then some of the larger packages are like coming out to LA, having dinner with the two of us, um, you know, doing a personal training session with Lawrence or a kind of glamour makeover with me, uh, you know, getting signed um, copies of the show of the, yeah, of the show and um, things like that. Oh, oh, Great and, uh, per- oh <laughs> this is a really fun one is a personalized soap monologue so a monologue yeah. is like one of those long speeches that you know you'll see someone give a cheery speech or something really dramatic or you know or even a scene and so I love that I, I think it's such a great gift if you know someone who has like a birthday coming up or it's a great kind of surprise holiday gift even if you wanted to do it now to have us pre- deliver a scene that and you give us the topic so you know if, if you're family member watches the show and you know that they love repairing cars like we could do a scene written about somehow written around like the drama of a love story of two people like who are repairing a car you know <laughs> Something like that. Whatever. that would idea, be it, such it, a great anniversary right? gift for somebody even if somebody oh, else yeah. from their family gave it to them or the husband gave it to the wife or vice versa i mean that would be amazing yeah, it's pretty. I, I think that that was it was actually the people who run Seed and Spark. It's the platform that we're working off of who gave us that idea, and we were like, "Oh my gosh, it's such a good idea!" So no yeah. one has um, claimed it yet, and we're dying to do it because I think it's. I just think it's such a, a fun thing. Oh my gosh, yeah, that would be great. So any of our listeners out there, if you have a few extra bucks and you love these guys and you love your hubby or your wife (laughs) and you want to do something special and unique, I mean, because how many times can you get a dozen roses and a box of chocolates? Come on, you know, (laughs) go for it. (laughs) You eat those Mm -hmm. chocolates, those flowers die, but you can have an eternal video or, a, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Monologue, you know, for yeah. for your wife or husband. So that would be something that would last forever. I think that would be great. Maybe I should give hints to my husband, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> Although all the good holidays have already passed, our anniversaries passed, my birthday's passed, Mother's Day passed. <laughs> you know? Oh, you can yeah, hold on to it, it for next you know? year. Exactly. Yeah. And then it would be a real surprise <laughs> because you would have forgotten about it by then. <laughs> that, that's true. Father's that's day. true. Father, <laughs> Father's Day, ma'am. Uh, yeah, Father's Day. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, would you like to give a shout out to everybody that's donated? I yeah, mean, absolutely. Go ahead, Mark. It's just so. I mean, we've had so many people to contribute and, and, and give in to us. I feel like I can't like isolate just one person because it's just really been this whole experience has been a community builder. So I, I yeah, mean, no, I, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I just, I, it's not only because it hasn't just been, there's so many ways to give, right? There's so many different ways to support. And obviously money means a lot. And we were just saying to each other that obviously when someone gives a big ticket item or a lot of money, it it means a lot because it gets us closer to our goal faster. But when someone gives $5, it also means a lot because it means like, you know, that's $5 you could have spent on a snack or renting a movie or something and you've decided to give it to our show and that makes you part of the team. It makes you part of like, it really does make you part of the, the group of people who are creating content on, on, on the web and hopefully on television one day. And that says a lot, you know, we have, we have a lot of power as individuals and I think individuals, especially when we come together and, um, and it's just especially heartening when we see them come through. It's like you check your email and it's like a pledge has come through and my, my little heart kind of jumps every time. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah. And, you know, and we're texting each other and we're back and forth like, oh, my gosh, did you see this? And, you know, and then when we do Instagram lives and people are giving, it, it means so much. I, I cannot tell you how much it means. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and – yeah, I mean, it's really been like this community that's come together. And like Carla said, we are, like at a, one point we had to get to 500 followers to get this filmmaking package that's valued at $9,000. And 
And if we get 500 followers, we get that. And just to see the amount of people just clicking follow, and it's free to click follow, mm. but just clicking follow and telling each other to click follow was making me go like, wow. Yeah. Wow. You know? And if, 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 I mean, if we had to shout out one group, I would say I, I shout out we, uh, Seed and Spark is an amazing crowdfunding source for filmmakers mm. and artists. That they really um, can coach you and, and really are hands-on with making sure every campaign gets the best kind of love it needs to be successful. So if you guys, if anyone's out there that's making a, a short film, a film, a web series, and they're looking for a platform to crowdfund, Seed and Spark's the way to go. They take care of you. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, they're new to me. I mean, until you guys did this, I didn't even know who they were because you always get the usual GoFundMe or um, what the other one I can't even think of off the top of my head now, but uh, like Indiegogo um, or Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Indie, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the ones you see all the time. So when I saw this one, I was, had to look into it, and and it's very interesting. And it seems like it was a good choice for you guys. So I'm glad that you went with them. Mm. They're great, and they're filmmakers too. So where Kickstarter and Indiegogo and GoFundMe, you know. Those are just projects that run the gamut. But here, mm-hmm. it's a filmmaking community. Focus. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's more it makes it even more special yeah. when people contribute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, much more support by people that know what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anybody out there that hasn't seen the first season yet of Wedlocked, you can go on YouTube and watch it. Um, after you laugh your butt off, then get over there and <laughs> click on stevenspark.com. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, throw a few dollars. It You know, it doesn't matter how much it is as long as, you know, you help them out in some way. I'm sure that, like Lawrence and Carla both said, uh, even a dollar makes a difference. That dollar can get them over the 100%, you know, at some point, oh, yeah. um, which That's is really right. close. It all so, adds up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like Definitely. a tortoise in the hair, you know? <laughs> it's like what we all learned right, in grade right. school, but like <laughs> slow and steady wins the race. It's really true. I mean, on Friday, I think we were at 67%, and now we're at 92 <laughs> you know? And we That's were like, crazy. Oh, you know, I hope we make 80%, like, because we had to get at least 80% to, to get to keep the funds. So we're like, gosh, I hope we, oh, hope we get to 80%. Okay. And now oh. we're like, I think we're going to make 100, guys, <laughs> you know? Oh, it's really amazing, gosh, but it's just slowly, so slowly, slowly having faith, yeah. And you can't be scared to do a project like this and ask for money, because I know there's a lot of people that have problems with asking for money, so you can't be afraid <laughs> yeah. to do that, you know? <laughs> you just got to you know, put it out there. It's like, that's exactly right, and I think it, 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 the worst thing that can happen is that people say no. And then in a way, Mm -hmm. like, that's kind of the beauty of crowdfunding, because if people say no, then you're like, well, maybe there isn't an audience for this. But what we Mm -hmm. found is, like, wow, people really are excited about this. They're as excited as we are. And and whether they're following or sharing about it or donating, now we know that there is an audience for this project. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, is there any other thing that you'd like to mention before we let you go? Just thank you, thank you again for having us on and, and for being such yeah, great fans. Did we say that at the same time? Did we say that at the yeah. exact same time? I think so. There it is. <laughs> so you're very welcome. And we'd love to have you back anytime. Um, Carla, this is the first time that we were able to speak with you, and it's been such a joy. Lawrence, you're mm-hmm. always fun, and we welcome you back anytime, either individually oh, or you. together. And just know that we will watch you on Bold and Beautiful for as long as you're on there, hopefully forever. But if you move on to other things yes. and in, of course, wedlock, we will always follow you wherever you go. Thank We're not you. stalkers. But, I mean, it truly means so much. No. <laughs> we, it really does. Very lovely, <laughs> lovely fans. <camp. laughs> All of our fans are, really. I mean, we, we are pretty blessed in our uh, – Soap fans are truly the best. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll let you go. And uh, 
I'll keep pumping out those tweets and promoting it, and we'll get you over the edge and where you need to be, and then more, because that's going to help us get more episodes out of you guys. That's <laughs> right. Right? Works for both Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good night, guys, and thanks again. Carolyn, go ahead and say Thank good you. night. Yes, good night, and thank you very much. Great interview. And I'll be thank tweeting. You. I'll be tweeting tweeting you out. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You so yeah. much. <laughs> okay. All right, take care, guys. Have a good night. Good you night. too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, again, for our listeners, that's seed, S-E-E-D, and, the word and, spark, S-P-A-R-K, dot com. Go on there and look up Wedlock, the series, and donate whatever you can. A couple bucks here or there, you know, instead of buying a Big Mac or what's the what's the coffee craze, Carolyn? What is, what is, oh, Starbucks, you know. Do without one Starbucks one time and <laughs> donate a few dollars. You're going to get some great content for that. So, And, Carolyn, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stepping in for David. Unfortunately, he had a funeral to go to, um, and Carolyn was kind enough to step in for him, and I appreciate it so much. Carolyn? Some of it, I was watching some of oh, it. Oh, you know, I That's couldn't great... hear you. You weren't on here. Oh, okay. Ah! <laughs> I said yeah, you were talking and there was no sound. Oh my gosh, that was oh. so weird. Oh dear. <laughs> the um, sorry about the that. I don't know that... what happened. No problem. Uh, I said that's a great project they've got going there. I was watching some of it today. It's so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> really. I good. know, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's just that's my go to thing, like, you know, we spoke about on last show, um, with our previous guests. I just absolutely love, love comedy. And yes. you know, when your favorite actors are in it makes it, you know, even better. So if you guys love Carla and Lawrence like we do, please watch it and then go donate. Honest to God, you're not gonna be sorry. Um, no, and if you so want to look for yeah. our, our tweet, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Real, real, yeah, real life. That um, the show was real life. <laughs> I saw that. And well, must, you know what? Think be. about it this way. I mean, there's a lot of sitcoms out there that you know deal with real life things, but they do it in a comedic way, and that's why it makes it even funnier to you because you can relate to those things. That's right. No, I think they're really on to something. Mhm. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I really, really hope that CBS picks this up. Um, I watch a lot of CBS, and I think that's my main channel. To tell you the truth, um, there's a lot of comedies on there, and I think this would fit in perfectly. Well, so, uh, that's well, that's what we need more of. Uh, there's way too much drama, drama. So we need some humor mm-hmm. for sure. Mhm. It was very Definitely. refreshing. Very refreshing. I wish them a lot Definitely. of luck. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay well, then I fun. guess we'll wrap yeah. it up. Thanks again, Carolyn, and thank you to Carla yeah. and Lawrence for joining us tonight. And we'll see you again um, Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we have two guests again that day, actually. Uh, David and I will be talking with. Um, award-winning actress Barbie Castro and her daughter Taylor Castro. Um, Barbie is involved in producing and acting in um, what I'm calling in my head the killer series, and it's on Lifetime. There's a (laughs) assumed killer, patient killer, uh, girlfriend killer, boyfriend killer, I can't think of the rest of them. Anyways, there's a bunch of those, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen. And what's even great about them is not only, of course, the storylines and Barbie, but Taylor's in, and she sings a song in one of them. I want to say it's in Girlfriend Killer, and because I don't have my notes in front of me, there's a lot of soap people on those movies. 
Patrick Muldoon, uh, right, Kate Manzi, yeah. uh, uh, Jason Cook who was just in the last one in Girlfriend Killer. Um, oh my gosh, I can't think. Um, Casper Van Dien, actually, you probably don't think of him as a soap actor, but he was on One Life to Live at one point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't think, but put it this way, there's a lot of days people in there, days of our life people in those movies. So we'll be chatting with them, and you guys will find out more um, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see you then. Carolyn, have a great night. Everybody else have a great night. And please be safe, Carolyn, and everybody in Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, Take care. We'll a... talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadio.com.